Now I said this finds area, and that's sort of true. Sort of true. Uh, if the function is always above the x-axis, then yes, it does give area. So in the example we just looked at uh, of x squared, it was always above the x-axis. So that actually did give us that area beneath the picture. However, uh, this is a graph that happens to actually also be below the x-axis. And I want to just explain a little bit about what this uh, does give us when we compute this thing. So first though, let's just compute this definite integral uh, from 0 to 4 of x cubed minus 8. So we go through and take the antiderivative of each piece. So for x cubed, the antiderivative. Uh, actually, let's, uh, let's make this a little more interesting. Instead of going from 4, 0, let's start at 1. So we start, though, by finding the antiderivative. So x cubed. Uh, we'd add 1 to the exponent and divide by it. So that would be 1 fourth x to the fourth. And then do the antiderivative of 8. So that would just be minus 8x. And then we're going to evaluate that at those two extreme values at 4 and at 1. So we'd go in here, evaluate it at 4, so that would be 1 fourth of 4 to the 4th minus 8 times 4. All that's minus 1 fourth times 1 to the 4th minus 8 times 1. Okay, and then we just take and go through and simplify. Uh, 1 fourth times 4 to the 4th. Well, 4 to the 4th would be 256, but we're doing 1 fourth of it, so that would just be 64. 8 times 4 would be 32, so we have 64 minus 32 would be 32. And then on the other side, we have 1 fourth minus 8, so that would be minus 7, negative 7, and 3 fourths. Right, 1 fourth minus 8 would be negative 7 and 3 fourths. So we have minus a negative means we're really adding that. So we end up with 39, oops, not plus, but equals 39 and 3 fourths. 39 and 3 fourths. Here is I've now drawn the graph of this, and let me just go in here and show you now what we've actually found. Ah.
So I drove in some barriers there, and I've done that because I want you to see that this is what we've found here. We really found this little area down here. Now that area is below the x-axis. That little piece down there is below the x-axis. So it actually gets counted as being a negative area. And then the other area that we found here I won't scribble it all in for a little bit. The blue area there is the area above the x-axis. And of course, being above, it would be positive. And when we do the integral, what we actually do what we're actually finding is the difference between the area above and the area below. And so when we do the definite integral, when you have a function like this that's both above and below over your interval, when you do the definite integral, you're actually finding the difference between the blue area and the green area. So that's visually what we're actually finding. So when we do that definite integral uh, of x cubed minus h from 1 to 4, uh, we're finding that difference between that positive area, the area above, and then that negative area, the area below. Okay.